This is the second version of this video. The first version I put out a couple of days ago and it was extremely popular. Um, however, severely criticized for a music soundtrack that I put on it. Uh, so I've redone the whole video without said soundtrack. And for those of you that didn't like the music, I hope you enjoy this more. And thank you very much for the feedback on the last video, because without feedback, I wouldn't have known to take the music off. Thank you again. Welcome back to the local history of Cornwall. Today, we're diving into the life of a true engineering legend, Richard Trivivik. Now, if you've ever ridden a train or marveled at steam engines, you owe a lot to this Cornish inventor, a local man from Campbell. From humble beginnings to world changing inventions, Trivivik's story is packed with innovation, adventure, and a few surprises. So let's get started. Richard Trevivik was born on April the 13th, 1771, in Ilogan, Cornwall, a region famous for its tin mines. Picture a young Richard, the youngest of six, growing up surrounded by the clatter and clang of mining machines. His father was a respected mine manager. So engineering was literally in his blood. But Richard wasn't exactly a star student. His teachers called him disobedient, slow, obstinate. Even his father thought he was a bit of a loafer. But here's the twist. Richard had an incredible knack for understanding machines. He just didn't fit into the classroom mould. No, no. You idiot. No, no. Now, he might have struggled at school, but Richard was a natural born engineer. He could visualize complex machines in his head and solve problems that baffled even the experts. And here's a fun fact. The man grew into a giant over six feet tall, earning the nickname the Cornish Giant. Aged just 19, Richard landed his first engineering job at the East Stray Park Mine. By 1796, he was promoted to Chief Engineer at the Ding Dong Mine. And yes, that really is its name. And the same year, he married Jane Harvey, daughter of John Harvey, founder of Harvey's of Hale. Together, they had six children, including Francis, who later wrote his dad's biography. But Cornwall had a unique problem. There was no local coal and they had to import it, making fuel super expensive. So therefore Cornish engineers, including Richard, were obsessed with squeezing every bit of power out of their steam engines. At the time, James Watt's engines were the gold standard, but they were huge and they used low pressure steam. Richard had a bold idea. What if he used high pressure steam instead? Most engineers thought it was too dangerous, but Richard saw the potential for lighter, more powerful engines. By 1797, he built working high pressure models. And soon his full scale engines were hoisting ore from deep underground. These puffer whims, as locals called them, vented steam straight into the air. No fancy condensers needed. Richard didn't stop at mining neither. In 1805, he even used his engines to power an iron rolling mill and to propel a paddle wheel barge. The guy was always thinking bigger. 
but here's where things really get exciting. On Christmas Eve 1801, Richard unveiled the Puffin Devil, the world's first high-pressure steam road vehicle. He and seven friends took it for a spin at Camborne Hill, making history as the first people to ride a steam-powered vehicle. Imagine the scene, steam billowing, gears churning and the locals staring in amazement. This was the dawn of the steam-powered age. Following on from his Puffin Devil, Richard then designed the London Steam Carriage in 1803. This innovative inventor dared to challenge the norm with his steam-powered vehicle. <laughs> Picture London streets buzzing with horse-drawn carriages and then like a vision from the future, Richard's steam carriage rolls in. Though it wasn't an immediate success, his pioneering spirit lit the way for the evolution of self-propelled transportation. Richard's London steam carriage was something of a trailblazer in transport history. Unfortunately, although groundbreaking, it faced a bumpy road. It was expensive to produce and maintain. The technology was still in its infancy, and this leaded to reliability issues. Roads weren't really designed for such vehicles, and the public perception leaned towards scepticism and fear stoking resistance and strengthening their reliability in the horse-drawn carriages that they saw as safer, cheaper and more comfortable. But Richard kept pushing boundaries and in 1804 he built the world's first steam railway locomotive for the Penny Darren Ironworks in Wales. On 21st of February his locomotive hauled the train along the tramway another world first, and this event paved the way for the railway revolution. It should be stated at this time that the tramway in question was never used for steam and it would have been a horse-drawn tramway. The ironworks belonged to the Humphrey brothers, Samuel, Jeremiah and Thomas, and although they operated in Wales, they weren't Welsh, hailing instead from Stourbridge. It was Samuel Humphrey who made a wager with Richard. 500 guineas, equivalent to roughly £23,000 in today's money, on whether his locomotive could haul a load of 10 tonnes along the full length of the Penny Darren line with only one person aboard and successfully return with the empty wagons. The bet was put to the test on February the 21st, 1804. The following day, Richard recorded in a letter, Yesterday, we set out on our journey with the engine. We transported 10 tonnes of iron five wagons and 70 men riding aboard. The journey spanned over nine miles, completed in four hours and five minutes, though we had to clear trees and remove large rocks along the way. The engine operated at nearly five miles per hour without requiring additional water in the boiler throughout the journey. It consumed 200 weight of coal. On our return trip, roughly four miles from the iron shipping point, a small bolt securing the axle to the boiler broke, causing all the water to escape and preventing the engine from returning until later that evening. However, the adjudicator, one Anthony Hill, turned out to be rather pedantic. He refused to pay up, citing technicalities, such as alterations made to the Plymouth Tunnel to increase clearance and the failure of the locomotive's water pump. Despite this, the Penny Darren locomotive proved easier to manage than horses and had no trouble pulling a 10-ton load. According to Richard, the machine operated for several days, covering the full nine and a half mile stretch of the line. Richard even intended for the locomotive to haul Samuel Humphrey's coach along the tramway, potentially making it the first passenger train pulled by steam engine. Unfortunately, it was too heavy for the brittle cast iron tram plates. Eventually, the locomotive was repurposed as a collier winding engine at Fossey Fran Colliery where it was likely scrapped in 1859. The Penny Down locomotive was the first rail-borne vehicle to propel itself under its own steam. It ran on four flangeless iron wheels and weighed about five tonnes when dry. Its boiler was cast iron, featuring a wrought iron return flue and chimney. A single horizontal cylinder 
eight and a half inches in bore and four feet six inches in stroke powered the engine. Exhaust steam from the cylinder was routed through the water heater before being expelled via a blast pipe in the chimney. Richard was the first to recognise and describe how the blast of exhaust steam improved combustion. He observed, The fire burns much better when the steam exits through the chimney than when the engine is idle. The steam increases the draft significantly as it moves up the chimney. Onlookers peered into the firebox as the engine operated at a slow pace, noting how the flames brightened each time steam was released into the chimney. The locomotive's working pressure likely reached 50 pounds per square inch, and it featured a spring-loaded safety valve, another of Richard's own inventions. It also deserves recognition for pioneering the use of two cylinders, working cranks set at 90 degree angle, which made the engine's motion more stable and eliminated the need for a flywheel. This was crucial advancement in steam engine and locomotive development. Richard definitively demonstrated that a steam engine, thanks to high pressure steam, could be built light enough to move itself. Additionally, he proved that iron wheels on iron rails provided sufficient traction for locomotion. He wrote, when that engine in Wales travelled along the tram road, which was very smooth, all its power still failed to make the wheels slip even when it was chained to a strong post for that particular experiment. Richard's next venture was yet another groundbreaking innovation. It was called the Catch Me Who Can, and it was a steam locomotive which he developed in 1808. It was amongst the first to demonstrate the potential of steam-powered transportation. This locomotive was built for a public demonstration in London, where people could pay for a ride on a circular track. Although it wasn't a commercial success, it showcased Richard's innovative spirit, and this endeavour is said to have led the foundation for the future of all rail transport. Sadly, the Catch Me Who Can was not really a successful venture, primarily due to the lack of robust railway infrastructure at the time. This made it difficult to operate efficiently, and the limited interest in steam locomotives at that time contributed to its downfall. The world just wasn't ready for Richard Trevivik's vision just yet. But despite all of these setbacks, Richard didn't give up and his next venture took him away from Britain's shores. In the 1810s, he took his expertise to South America, working as a mining consultant in Peru. He even explored Costa Rica, proving himself as a true global engineer. Always searching for new challenges. Despite his brilliance, Richard's career was a roller coaster. He faced fierce competition, patent battles, and financial ups and downs, and sadly, his latter years were marked with obscurity and hardship. Richard Trevivik passed away on the 22nd of April 1833 in Dartford in Kent. He was just 62. His achievements weren't largely unrecognised. But history didn't forget him, and today Richard is celebrated as the inventor of the high-pressure steam engine and the first steam locomotive. His engines powered mines, factories, and the very first railways, setting the stage for modern rail travel. Indeed, lots have been written about him, and this video joins a stack of others with him as a subject. There's even been statues erected to him and his inventions. The main one of these statues being in Camborne, depicting him holding a model of a steam locomotive and a pair of dividers. It was erected in 1928 and was created by the sculptor L.S. Merrifield. It stands as a tribute to Richard's contribution to engineering and innovation. Another can be found at the Pennydown Ironworks site in Merford Tidville. This monument commemorates the historic journey of the original locomotive and its role in the history of steam locomotion. Yeah. 
but the greatest commemoration of Richard's life must be through Trevivic Day in Camborne. Trevivic Day is an annual celebration of Camborne's industrial and mining heritage and is dedicated to Richard. The event was first held on the 20th of April 1984. It's taken place every year since, traditionally falling on the last Saturday of April. It was conceived in 1983 by Trevor Daly, aiming to bring the community together in recognition of its historic contributions to industry. Over the years, attendance has generally ranged from 20 to 30,000 visitors. The festivities transformed Camborne streets into a lively hub of activity, temporarily close to traffic and filled with the rumbling and tooting of steam engines. Throughout the day, visitors can enjoy an array of attractions, including steam engines and a steam parade, Sound stages featuring local bands and choirs, street entertainers, buskers and stalls, a fairground and street food vendors, historical exhibitions and museum events, a schools competition, stationary engines and vintage vehicles, trips on vintage buses, and morning and afternoon processional dances led by the Camborne Town Band. The day offers a rich blend of fun and history, creating an atmosphere that celebrates Camborne's legacy, whilst engaging the community and visitors alike. So the next time you see a steam engine or ride on a train, remember Richard Trevivic, the Cornish giant, who changed the world with his bold ideas and unstoppable curiosity. If you enjoyed this journey through history, please hit the like and subscribe. And let us know what you would like to see next in the comments. And don't forget to do the bell thingy. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. In the heartbeat of Cornwall, he found his start. A steam revolution, a work of art. Oh, the wheels would turn and the whistle would sing. A Cornish man lead the Iron King. Through the coal and fire, he drew his line. And the steam engine roared for the very first time.